picture can say a thousand words. And there are some pictures that when you look at them, you think, how? None scream more or drive the point home than this. So how did this locomotive get into this predicament? Let's have a look, shall we? The Granville to Paris express route was a popular one with many tourists and travellers, as it was one of the many routes which connected the English Channel with Paris and was operated by Chemins de Faloist. It was one of the many routes that the company ran from the beaches to the heart of the city and had been running for the best part of nearly 50 years. The 22nd of October 1895 started well. The crew picked up engine number 721, a 240 type 120 mixed traffic tender engine and was driven by Guillaume Marie Pellin with fireman Victor Garnier who readied her to start her day. They knew that they would be hauling post and luggage vans as well as six passenger coaches. It was routine and they set off from the town of Ranville exactly on time. In the meantime in Paris, Marie-Augustine Gilliard and her husband were setting up for their day's work. They were newspaper vendors and had their stall just below their impressive station. The station platform was at least a storey above them with an entrance nearby. For them, simply another day. Although the vendors were having a typical day, 721 was not and was rather late in thanks in part to signalling errors. Knowing the implications of being late, the driver was going much faster than intended, but by 3.30 it was no good and the train was still late. It was also around this time that Marie had taken over the newspaper stand while her husband left to collect the evening papers. The train was fitted with Westinghouse air brakes and any experienced driver knew that relying solely on the air brake, especially in the Gare Montparnasse, to stop the train was a bad idea. In fact, it was forbidden. There were also two guards aboard who had control of a physical handbrake to slow or stop the train if needed. Whether it was a moment of lapsed judgment or poor timing, at 4pm the train entered the station at over 25 miles an hour. The end of the track, the buffers and the busy concourse lay beyond and beyond that, the building wall. The driver, realising that they were coming in hot, applied the Westinghouse brake. But to his horror, nothing happened. He applied the steam brake and the handbrake, but that only succeeded in helping to slow the engine, not the rake of coaches and wagons behind it. The guard who was catching up on his paperwork suddenly realised the peril and went for his handbrake. But it was too late. Pushed on by the inertia of the carriages, the train ploughed through the buffers and onto the concourse as screaming passengers leapt aside to safety. Both driver and fireman leapt out of the cab as the engine hit the outer wall and with a mighty crash pushed through it and to a 30 foot drop below near to Marie and her newsstand. She'd stood no chance and was hit and killed by the falling masonry other than poor Marie. The rest of the 131 passengers survived, mostly unhurt, although the driver and fireman and four others had sustained injuries. The train remained perched on its nose for several days, while engineers figured out how to extract the engine from the station and a number of photos were taken, including the famous ones that are in wide circulation today taken by Levy and Sons. Although many people thought it was quite surreal, so much so that many would purchase a rail ticket just to see the wreck. There were so many people that the authorities had to stand by to control crowds and the story of the train through the wall became headline news all over the world. The engineers tasked with the extraction of the engine were faced with a rather tough and complex challenge. 
The locomotive was dangerously unstable and there was a real danger that the engine could fall further and tumble to the ground, taking the tender and more of the building with it. The crew started by shoring up the precarious tender so it wouldn't move, then their attention turned to the 50 ton engine. Shoring up the engine wasn't a problem, getting it out was. It was decided that as the engine was already out of the station, it was best that it was lowered to the ground, then the tender and the rolling stock could be pulled back onto the rails. First, a complex system of beams were constructed, kind of like a staircase, but it failed to work. Next, they used brute force to pull the engine out, first by using 50 strong men, but then that didn't work, a team of horses. Still, the engine refused to budge. Finally, after using a complex series of wires and pulleys, were the engineers able to safely guide the engine to the ground. The engine was taken by road to the works where it was given a thorough check over, while the tender and remaining carriages were pulled back onto the rails by a secondary engine. Amazingly, the engine was in fairly good condition and had little damage and was able to be reunited with its tender and put back to work. For the driver though, going back to work was not as easy. After a lengthy inquiry, blame was put both on the spriver speeding and the dodgy air brake. Fault was also put on the guard who had an opportunity to slow the engine down before the accident occurred using the handbrake, but had failed to notice the speed due to him being distracted due to his paperwork. The driver was fined 50 francs and given a two month suspended prison sentence, while the guard was fined 25 francs. The company also understood their responsibility to Marie and her family. Marie was a mother of two children, so the company paid compensation to her husband and paid for Marie's children's schooling and promised them both that they had jobs for life within the company. Unsurprisingly, this accident and its photos has shaken the spark of inspiration with many, including a certain television show who decided to recreate the accident with a certain big blue engine. Gordon's sudden decision to make the station wall a window has been immortalised by fans as one of the greatest Thomas and Friends crashes ever. And I certainly agree. Another more direct nod to the crash was in the film Hugo. If you haven't seen it, it's a must watch. In the film, an engine crashes through the buffers and concourse and out the window. The film is a mix of CGI model and real life blends and they all blend together seamlessly. I won't spoil it, but for those who love trains, clocks, mystery and old, old films, will love this story. What is surprising though, is that this was not the only time an engine tried its buffer at home improvements. In 1905, the New York, New Havens and Hartford's locomotive number 321 was settled in the engine's roundhouse. When the engine suddenly started moving, it wasn't just moving, it was getting on going quick and with an almighty bang smashed through the back wall. What's weirder is that to the right of the engine, you can see the freshly repaired brickwork. It seems that engines were really insistent on that better view. Luckily, these sorts of accidents, while spectacular, are thankfully rare, and the Mont Paradise station is still there. Sadly though, the famous facade is long gone, but there are many, many references to its memory, and its photo has been made widely public. It kinda reminds you, if you're having a bad day, you just need to remember it could be so, so much worse. <laughs>